Let us pray. Our Father, we do thank you for what we've been learning over a few weeks now as we are developing us as leaders and workers in the vineyard of the Lord. We pray, O Lord, that these studies will not be in vain in Jesus' name. And as we are going a step further to put the outlines in our hand, we pray, O Lord, your purpose will be fulfilled in every individual life and in the whole ministry in Jesus' name. Bless us tremendously tonight and use us to be a blessing to other people. We pray that we'll never be the same again and the ground we stand on will be solid ground. Then we'll be able to move on and do the work you have committed into our hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Last week we had an introductory study to the book of Joshua and we dealt with the life of Joshua. Today we are looking at Joshua chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 1 through to verse 5. Joshua chapter 1, we're reading from verse 1 all through to verse 5. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Today we're looking at the subject, Divine Assurance for an Appointed Leader. We studied extensively last week, and we saw that Joshua was appointed by the Lord. And now we want to find the assurance and the confidence that God gave unto Joshua after he had chosen him. God's servants are trained for specific duties and responsibilities according to the plan and the purpose of God for each of them. You need to understand that God has a plan for every child in his family. He has a plan for every minister in his church. God has a plan for you. We have studied already the training and preparation of Joshua. We now want to see and learn from his appointment. We want to learn lessons that pertain to us leaders today. The same God who directs and designs the training also decides and determines the task to be carried out. If God appoints somebody, he will also appoint the task he wants that individual to carry out. If we accept and follow through on that training, then he will appoint us to the specific assignment he has for us. But first, he informs us about the death of Moses. If you look at verse 1, it says now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, and then it goes on. In verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Already we know that death is a reality in the world in which we live. Both saints and sinners die. When a sinner dies, he goes to his place of punishment. When a saint dies, when a child of God dies, that death leads to rest and reward. In Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 14 rather, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, here it says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, 
Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. That means, number one, there is rest for the one that has labored in this world, and then there is reward. Then he goes to his reward. We find that in life, God honored Moses. He honored him too in death. Even Israel showed deep respect and honor for him in the way they mourned for him. When a child of God dies, as I have stressed it a few times, there is nothing to be so sorrowful about. In fact, we are told in Psalm 116. Psalm 116. We are told in verse 15 there that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And sooner or later, every child of God, if Jesus tarries, will leave this area and this period of laboring and working. We are here to serve our own generation by the will of God. And after we finish, then we go to our rewards. We know that Moses went to heaven. How do we know that? Because he appeared later on the Mount of Transfiguration. The assurance is there. After his labors, he went to rest. He went to his reward. We're looking at three points. Number one, patience while waiting for God's time. Patience while waiting for God's time. Number two, the promise of a given territory. The promise of a given territory. Number three, power for great triumph. Number one, we're looking at verses one and two again, Joshua chapter one. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. The Lord is leading us to the book of Joshua for a purpose. And we're going to stay for some weeks in this book to see what the Lord has to tell the church and the leadership of the church in the life of the minister, the ministry of the minister, the attitude and the conduct of the minister, and the things that we're called to do. First of all, we see the patience of this man as he waited for the time of God. Actually, when you look at the life of Joshua, there are many, many things we learn from his life and his ministry. The average person, any of us, would have jumped into business, would have said, now Moses is gone. The Spirit of God is upon me. The wisdom of God is there as well. I know what to do. In fact, in the world, when they teach about leadership, one of the strong points in the world is that a leader must be able to take initiative. And that's what uh, Joshua could have capitalized upon. He could have said, Moses is not there. I am the man of the hour. Therefore, I'm going to take initiative. But do you understand? In the kingdom of God, you can take initiative and ruin your life. You can take initiative and run ahead of God. Think about it. Joshua will not act until God said, Arise. And except to wait for that word from the Lord, arise. And then he points to you what to do, how to do it, and where to do it. Then you miss the point. And you'll find that you run ahead of God. And then God brings you back. You'll be marking time. Isn't that what happened to Moses himself? When he was at the age of 40, he thought the people would have understood that God raised him up a leader over the people. And so he took loss into his hand. He took initiative, as the people of the world will say. And then God said, that's not the right way. The second day when he came, he would have settled them and set them right. And then one of them said, who made you a judge and a ruler over us? Then he knew that what he did was actually not right. He ran away and he spent 40 years at the back of the desert. Anybody would have asked the question? Has Joshua not been trained? Was he not a close minister, a close age of Moses? Was he not known 
and loved by all Israel? Had they not been encouraged and charged by Moses himself? Yes, indeed, all those things are true. But it's a great virtue in our lives when you wait for the time of God. In fact, you might ask, but you had the spirit of wisdom. Yes, my brothers and sisters, that's the very secret. Wisdom waits. It is wisdom that waits for the time of God before you take a step, before you do what you think you want to do. We come to Deuteronomy chapter 34, reading from verse 5. So, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab. That means God himself. Honored Moses so much, he buried him. And then it says, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher, his burying place, unto this day. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural, uh, his natural force abated at the age of 120. That's exactly why we're studying these things. That as we look at the lives and the ministries of the ministers that went before us, we'll be able to go to God in prayer and say, God, you have not changed. Your power has not changed. Your intention has not changed. Neither has your purpose changed. If you did it for them like that, you can do it for us as well. That as our days, so our strength shall be. In fact, that's one of the promises he gave in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Verse 25, thy shoes shall be iron and brass. That means as a walk, you trample upon serpents, upon scorpions, and whatever dangerous elements are there will not touch you. Thy shoes shall be iron as well as brass. And then it says, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. As you grow older in the Lord, then you grow older. And you have strength, more strength than you had before. As we study those things, claim those promises of the Lord. Now we learned something about Joshua. From what we learned last week, you will see that he had um, appropriately filled the position that he occupied. As a servant to Moses, as a minister of Moses, he was very, very faithful. And now the mantle fell upon him. If you are faithful in the little you are doing now, then the mantle will fall upon you to do the very specific thing for which the Lord has raised you up. In First Timothy, First Timothy, chapter three, verse thirteen, here we are told that when you do what you are doing now faithfully, and you are loyal, and you are committed, and you are trustworthy. It makes the Lord to be able to give you more. Verse 13 of 1 Timothy chapter 3. For they that use, that have used the office of a deacon well, purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Be faithful then in the little you have now. You know the attitude of some people? Oh, they say it's a little thing. Why should I be extra careful? Why should I be overzealous? Why should I be so faithful? Is it not a little thing? Yes, a little thing. He that is faithful in a little will be given opportunity and privilege for much. Therefore, give yourself to the Lord. Give it everything that it's God. Make sure you are faithful in what the Lord has called you to. But then, even the faithfulness will not justify that you push yourself forward and then you seize power and you begin to do what the Lord has not called you to do. You wait. And as you are waiting, you are depending upon the Lord that the time of the Lord is the best. We find that Joshua was not ambitious. Neither was he interested in seizing power. He was not eager to be a captain over the Lord's people to lot things over them. He had learned what we all need to learn. What is it we need to learn? It's in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. He don't seize power. He don't plan a kind of church coup. 
You don't plan a coup in your district and take over power. You wait, you don't seize it, you don't take it until God says, arise. Before you actually arise and uh, then do what he wants you to do. Actually, do you know that God himself waits? And there are many times when God is waiting that you think he's waiting too long. Because the way God calculates time is different from the way we calculate time. A day in the sight of the Lord is uh, like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. And therefore, when you think it's uh, too much, I've been waiting for a long time. I think how to take initiative now. I think how to jump at it now and do whatever I like. You may find that God is still waiting and you run ahead. And you run ahead without the power of God, without the approval of God, without the unction of God. And without the authority that is necessary to get the work done. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 18. Isaiah chapter 30, open your Bible please. Verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait. Have you ever seen that? You thought God was in a hurry. You thought God was always in a haste. You thought God wanted everything done now. Hurry up and finish it up. You thought that was the attitude of God. But it says here, therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. Therefore will he be uh, exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment, of justice. Here comes our part now. It says, blessed are all they that wait for him. At the beginning of the verse it says God is waiting. At the end it says you too, you wait for God. Before you push yourself forward, wait for God. You will not push yourself forward. You will not help other people and push them forward. And if there is any Absalom that is pushing himself forward, you will not support him. If you really believe in God, it will not be such a difficult thing to wait for the time of God. In Isaiah chapter, 16, chapter 28 verse 16. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion, for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. You know, if you are in a hurry to jump at it, this is my chance. Push down other people so you can do whatever you want to do. You really don't believe in God. There is some belief there. You think if I don't take it, if I don't use worldly power and get myself there, God will forget me. And because God is too slow, let me hurry up and seize the power. Don't do that. Wait for the time of God. If you really believe the Lord, you will wait. We go to point number two. The promise of a given territory. The promise of a given territory. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. You find that God himself clearly defined the perimeters or the boundaries of the promised possession. You know, there's a lot of instruction in what we're looking at today. Because when people read, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. They think that means an indefinite kind of boundary. That as far as you can walk, as far as you can move, just keep on treading over it. It doesn't matter whether it belongs to the other person. It is yours once you claim it. But you see, the word of God is very clear. Put your uh, finger in Joshua and, stay and come back to Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, God told the children of Israel, he told them the part and the portion he was not even giving them. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, that dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, 
for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Now you will see here that God said, when I say every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I'm specific about it. And I set the perimeter. And I set the boundary. I've already told you, the land that I give to the Edomites, the descendants of Esau, you are not to meddle with them. It is not given to you at all. Please learn, therefore, that when God calls you, he calls you to a particular area of ministry. And he sets the boundary. As long as you are in the circle of the possession God has given you, you can claim the promises of the Lord. Take, for example, you are a coordinator in a particular territory. You have the liberty to do everything that it ought to be done there. Once you overstep your territory, and you go over the boundary and the perimeter, and you go to another person's field, and then you say, it's because he's not doing his work, therefore I can do mine and take extra thing. That's not the will of God. You cannot take the promises of God and make it like an elastic thing and stretch it beyond the portion that the Lord has given you. And in the church here, we have a dose or in the choir. If you are in the choir, you are there to sing. You keep to your territory that the Lord has given you. Once you make that thing so elastic and you go beyond to the ministry of another person, the blessing of the Lord will not be there. Therefore, please understand that when God calls, he calls you and he determines and defines the boundary of your ministry. And I need to tell you, I think you ought to know, uh, there is something for the coordinator to do. And there is something that will go beyond the responsibility of the coordinator. And then you are now coming to the responsibility of the pastor. And when you take loss into your hand as a coordinator, and then you overstep your boundary. And the thing you are supposed to do, you have done. And the rest that remains for the pastor to do now, you push yourself forward. And you say, I have the knowledge. That's not the problem. It's not that you have the knowledge. The problem is, this is your territory. Stay by your territory. And we can say that for other areas of work to you. You will know that this is what God has given you to do. And you are faithful in doing that, that the Lord has given you to do so that they carefully match out perimeter of the possession you keep to that. After saying that now, let's come back to Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, while you are remaining in that perimeter, you understand now, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. And then he now gives them the boundaries in verse 4. We need to understand that God is a faithful God. But he can only give us what? He has specifically promised us when we pray. And our prayers will be mighty and effectual. If in ministry, everyone will stay by the well-defined perimeters or the boundaries of his ministry. In um, Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. Verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man, that he shall repent, as he said, and shall he not do it? And as he spoke in, and shall he not make it good? That's telling us about the faithfulness of God. And he was telling Joshua, he said, move on. You see the perimeters, always be conscious of that. And while you are staying within the perimeters, within the boundary, you are free. Every place the sole of your foot then shall tread upon, I have given unto you. Apply that to us today. The Lord God in heaven, because of what his only begotten son has done, he has given the world unto Christ. And now we are told in Psalm 2. Psalm 2, verse 8. Let me read from verse 7. So you will understand who has the claim to the promise in verse 8. Verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, still telling the son, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Understand? That's giving to Christ. 
but now Christ has given it to the church. The Lord has said to the church, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But understand, that commission is given to the whole church. No single individual Christian can jump up and say, The Lord has said, Go ye into all the world. No, it's not given to you as an individual, it's given to the whole church. And then when you come to the whole church, God now begins to define that this group of believers, this is what they will do. And this individual believer that is now trained to be a minister of the gospel, this is what he will do. He appoints, he apportions what each one is to do to everyone. Look at Acts chapter 22, verse 10. Acts chapter 22. Verse 10, and I said, what shall I do, Lord? Have you ever asked the Lord? Or do you think it's all right to just do anything that comes to your mind? And I asked, and I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise, go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee. It shall be told thee. You know, if we believe the scriptures, you'll wait until you are told. You have some people that believed in the Lord before you believed. You have others in the leadership before you came into the leadership. And when you are appointed into leadership, when you are appointed into an area of work, you will be told exactly what you will do. Keep to that. Don't go beyond that. Don't take laws into your hand. And then begin to do other things and feel that one is careless. It's not doing what you ought to do. Then you jump into his field and get it done. That one is not doing what you ought to do. You jump into his field. You get it done. The pastor is not doing the way you ought to do it. You jump into his field. And then you take laws into your hand. That's not the will of God. If we are born again, all you are wanting to do is, Lord, I don't want to do anything that will not be rewarded. I don't want to do anything that you will not approve of. I'm a child of God. I'm a servant of the Lord now. He has appointed me and therefore I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what will you have me to do? Everyone shall ask the Lord. And then in that verse 10, it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Appointed for thee to do. And of course, Paul the Apostle realized that. He knew that there were things appointed for him to do. How do we know that? Look at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Reading from verse 13. Romans 11 verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. He said I know my limitations. I know what the Lord has appointed me to do. He has specially sent me to minister unto the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. Galatians chapter, chapter 2. In Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 7. Galatians 2, verse 7. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter. Do you see the clearly defined ministry there? He said, I know what was committed into my heart. And Peter knew what was committed into his hands. In verse 9, when James, Severs, and uh, John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave unto me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. Listen to this now. That we should go to the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Well, if we study the Bible then, and we allow the Spirit of God to minister to us and to talk to us, He will tell us when He appoints us, we are not supposed to be jack of all trade and master of none. We are supposed to identify what the Lord has called us to do in the church. And then to keep to that and don't overstep your boundary if you want the blessing of the Lord upon you. And every time the Lord will even come to uh, Paul and will remind him what he had given unto him. And it was because of what the Lord told him. That's what I've given to you. That's what I've given to you. He had confidence. He had faith. To be able to move on because he knew he was in the center of the will of God, of the appointment of God for him. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Acts, chapter 18, verse 9. 
then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. The confidence was there to continue teaching there because God said, Paul the apostle, I'm there with you. And I sent you there. I have much people there. And through your ministry, they're supposed to be converted. In Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Verse 23 and verse 24. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. Whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee, that's it, know what the Lord has given unto you. And know what he has not given unto you. If he has given it to you, then he will bless you while you are doing it. It says, He has given unto thee all those that sail with thee. That's a great lesson we learn from that area. The promise of a given territory. When we concentrate our evangelism and our teaching ministry in the place and the territory which God has appointed for us, we shall have great results. Even though God had given the specified land or specific area of land to Israel, you understand they still must make effort. They still have to labor and fight to possess their possession. And even though the Lord has given us the members of our household to be saved and all that sail with us yet we must pray and yet we must preach and yet we must work and labor to bring them into the kingdom we come to point number three power for great triumph power for great triumph in joshua chapter one here in verse five we find what the lord told joshua and what he's telling us to you it says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. The first thing we want to ask is, since this was specifically given to Joshua, what right have we as children of God today to claim that for ourselves? The reason we can claim that to ourselves it's because of what the Holy Ghost himself wrote through Paul the Apostle in uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. Uh, you see that again, God has appointed you to be our fellowship leader. Be content with such things as ye have. God has appointed you to be a zonal leader. Be content with such things as ye have. God has appointed you to be a leader in the language section. Keep to that, keep to that. Don't overstep your boundary. And you make sure that you are content, you are satisfied with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We're going back to Joshua again. That's exactly what God told Joshua. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Here is the boundary. Keep within that boundary. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. Within that boundary, I have given unto you. And then he says, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Come back to Joshua chapter 1. In verse 5 it says, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee. Here he gave Joshua the promise. And then he said, it will not just be for him alone. It was for all the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And in verse 25. Deuteronomy 11, 25. There shall not any man, there shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you. And the dread of you upon all the land that he shall tread upon, as he has said unto you, talking to the whole nation. And then when it says in that verse 5 of Joshua chapter 1, it said, All the days of your life, which means if we're faithful to the Lord and we keep to the assignment he has given unto us, it says, He will be with us all the days of our lives. And then it says, As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. How do we watch the meaning of that? 
in connection with no man shall be able to stand before you. Come to Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9 verse 11. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. It says, as the magicians were not able to stand before Moses, so the magicians will not be able to stand before you. And that's what the promise the Lord is giving us today. That if we'll take the challenge from tonight and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the past. But from this very day, I'm going to stay within my boundary. And I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to give everything I've got into the service of the Lord. The Lord is saying, no witch shall be able to stand before you. No wizard shall be able to stand before you. No traditional man with traditional power and their spiritual traditional bullet will be able to penetrate into your life in Jesus' name. In fact, he tells you, this is the promise of God for you to claim in Exodus chapter 23 verse 27. Exodus 23 verse 27, I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. I will make all thine enemies to turn their backs on thee. Your enemies will run away from you. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter 28, here he tells us that when those enemies come, they will not have power over you. Tonight, if you'll make up your mind, that you will stand in the place of righteousness. You will not be too much in a hurry to jump ahead of God. You will do only what the Lord has given you to do. You will be victorious from today in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way. What's the rest of the verse? And flee before thee seven ways. Seven is a number for completeness. It means they will flee. You will not find them again anymore. In Jesus' name. But make sure you're doing what the Lord has appointed for you to do. First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13 verse 1. Behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the watch of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then this man of God, he declared the word that the Lord had given him. The king didn't like it. Look at verse 4. And it came to pass. When King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth a son from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, a son which he put forth against him. Tell me out loud. Dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. Well, with this series of studies we're having, new days have arrived already. Revival for a personal life has arrived already. There will be nobody that is able to hurt you in Jesus' name. As the Lord was with Moses, the Lord will be with you. As Goliath could not stand before David, Goliath will not be able to stand before you. Giants will not be able to stand before you. But Jesus will not be able to stand before you. The sorcerers will not be able to stand before you. In the day and in the night, in the dream, any time, they will not be able to stand before you in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up. While you are rising up, you understand. There shall not any man. There shall not any witch. There shall not be any wizard. There shall not any sorcerer. There shall not any familiar spirit. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee. All the days of thy life. As the Lord was with Moses. As the Lord was with David. As the Lord was with Paul. As the Lord was with Daniel. As the Lord was with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. As the Lord was with the people of God in those days. The Lord will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You will stand and declare the truth of God. And no witch and no witch wizard shall make you afraid the hand of the lord is upon you the power of the lord is upon you if god be for us if god be for us if god be for us who can be against us they will come against you one way and they will flee from you seven ways the lord has given you the victory the lord has given you the victory he will send fear before you he will send his chariots before you his angels to support you they will never be able to kill you they will never be able to touch your life they'll never be able to ruin your life as the lord was with his people in those olden days so the lord will be with you he will never leave you he will never leave you he will never leave you don't fear what you see in the district 
Is there somebody there declaring himself to be a wizard? Somebody there declaring himself to be a witch? Don't fear them. Somebody there saying that they are familiar spirit or they are parents of darkness. Don't fear them. They will not stand. They will not stand. They will not stand. You are the apple of the eye of the Lord. They can't touch you. They can't touch you. They can't kill you. They can't destroy your life. Your life is secured in the hand of the Lord. There is power for great triumph. There is power for great triumph. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will support you. The Lord will protect you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Their powers will crumble in your life. Every stronghold of the enemy, you will overcome, you will destroy. If they shoot their bullet at you in the night, it will not catch you. Are you not a servant of God? Are you not a minister of the gospel? Has not God appointed you? Has he not put you into place? They cannot touch God, so they cannot touch you. They cannot harm God, so they cannot harm you. Your life is seed with Christ in God. Witches are powerless when they come against you. Wizards are powerless when they come against you. Evil sicknesses will not have any hold on you. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. There is nothing for you to fear. Is the one that sent you and is the one that is supporting you. Have you been fearing the devil before? Have you been fearing those familiar spirits before? Have you been fearing those old women before? You are invincible while you stand in the center of the will of God. Unconquerable. While you stand in the center of the will of God, the Lord is on your side. And if God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment you are going to condemn. That's the heritage of the children of God. The righteousness is of me, says the Lord. You will overcome. You will overcome. You will overcome. Doesn't matter where they are coming from. Doesn't matter they are in the ocean, they are in the sea, they are in the waters. You will overcome them. It doesn't matter their conspiracy in the forest or in the village or anywhere. You will overcome them. Greater is he, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you believe you have the victory already? How many of you believe they cannot stand before you? That from tonight things are different in Jesus' name. Why are you fearing the enemy when they are fearing you? Why are you fearing the witches when they are supposed to be fearing you? Why are you fearing the familiar spirits when they are supposed to be fearing you? They will not be able to stand before you. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I am with you. I will never leave you, God said, and he will never forsake you. Raise up your hand there. We are going to pray. You are not going to be cringing for the devil again. You are not going to be running away from the devil again. You are not going to be fearing witches and wizards again. God has given you authority. God has given you power. A, maybe you are a leader, a coordinator, women coordinator, zona leader, women rep, and other leaders. Anytime they say that uh, somebody is having witchcraft or whatever, then you run away. I don't want to deal with that. Tonight, you begin to deal with it yourself in Jesus' name. The word of God in your mouth will be fire. It will consume all their charcoal. It will consume all their charm. You will be victorious. All those strongholds you will destroy in Jesus' name. Keep up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we are not here by accident. All these brothers, all these sisters, in whatever area you have placed them, there is nothing small. There is nothing insignificant in your kingdom. You have placed us where we are. You have given us the assignment we are doing. And we're giving our heart. We're giving our mind. We're giving everything we have got. And where we have not given enough, help us to give more in Jesus' name. We now claim the promise you have given us. Where there has not been any progress, where there has not been success, you have told us, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon, you have given unto us. I pray, O oh Lord, all the hindrances to progress, remove it in Jesus' name. 
whatever has been happening that we do not see the evangelism bearing fruit we do not see the ministry bearing fruit we do not see the growth that we ought to see all those things hindering us take them away in jesus name lord i pray that from tonight your people will see the victory they will see the progress all the hindrances are taken away in jesus name now here lord see the promise you have given us you said no man shall be able to stand before us but lord we need to confess to you we're sorry for some weeks and for some months even for some years when we hear that witches are there sorcerers are there familiar spirits are there wicked people are there in fact some of us leaders we complain that they oppress us that they are pressing us now that they are drunk they are stopping our business that they are destroying our family from tonight it will not be so again in jesus name all those magicians all those sorcerers all those witches and wizards all those familiar spirits all those goliaths will come against you in the name of the lord get out of the way in jesus name lord i pray before every child of god here before every minister of the gospel here every brother every sister here every mountain will be leveled in jesus name all the giants all the goliaths will come against you you are defeated in jesus name oh lord i pray for my brothers and sisters any sickness in their body any affliction in their body anything the devil is putting there to disturb them that when this is there they will not be able to concentrate when this is there they will not be able to do the work i cancel them in jesus name i pray lord as they go back to the district when witches see them those witches will tremble when familiar spirit boys and girls see them they will tremble in jesus name and i pray that you give the word of authority to all these brothers and sisters that when they stand and they pray in the name of jesus demons will vanish away sicknesses will vanish away attacks will vanish away mountains will move away make the word of their mouth words of authority and words of power lord i pray that from today we'll begin to hear new testimonies miraculous things will be taking place in jesus name i sprinkle the blood of jesus upon every one of these brothers and sisters and i surround them with the fire of the holy ghost and i pray that no evil power no traditional bullet will be able to penetrate into their lives into their families in jesus name give them power give them greater anointing give them greater authority that the enemies will crumble and fall before them in jesus name if they have any of members of their family sick at home as they get back home tonight and they lay hands upon those members of the family that are sick i pray oh lord you rest up the sick in jesus name brothers and sisters now you carry power be very careful with that power lord i pray that they will never be defeated in jesus name we thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray amen we are able to go up and take that country